having fun. Great. So welcome everyone to our monthly My Speaker Business Community Call. And I always love to see how we are again spanning the globe, having wonderful speakers here with us from, you know, all over Germany, now also in Spain, uh, even in Singapore, and we have more people coming in. Uh, that's great. And as you know, um, for everyone that is here with us for the first time, uh, a lot of you are here with us pretty regularly, but some of you for the first time, um, let me just tell you what these calls are about. So these are obviously calls um, for um, aspiring and established speakers. And by the way, I already hear some background noise, so we don't want to have that. It's me um, trying to turn it off. Yes, Sarah, okay, great. <laughs> give me a second. Good. I'll give you a second. Okay, shout again. I just try to close you. Okay, good. So, um, okay, so, so something up front technically. Please mute yourselves when you're not speaking. <laughs> okay, but anyhow, for everyone that is here with us for the first time, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, th these are calls for aspiring speakers, um, established, uh, you know, aspiring speakers. Uh, you will get practical hints and tips from our guest experts that you can apply right away. And I still get background noise. Sorry, I need to actually do something myself. Okay. Um, sorry, give me a second. Sarah, I need to mute you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Thank know, you. I, I, oh, I'm trying to and I can't. This is funny. Okay. Someone. Wants, okay. Someone I'll go offline and come back in 10 minutes. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> come back as fast as you can. Yeah. Do something. Okay. Um, so, okay. And everyone else that's not muted, please mute yourselves. Okay. And uh, I'll do that for you right now. Um, so, um, let me do an introduction again. Um, <laughs> so funny sometimes. As speakers, as you know, some unexpected things happen and then we need to pick it up again. So, um, these calls are really there for you to give you practical hints and tips from our guest experts that you can apply right away in your speaking and your business. You can also please, and please take advantage of that. You can ask your own personal questions on how to make your business and your speaking business work further. You can exchange with other professional speakers. You can ask for help and support and promotion from others on your own high priority project. And most importantly, you can have fun with us. Okay. Um. Okay, so this should solve it. Sorry, I had to take some drastic technical measures. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Um, so um, I'm sure Sarah will be back with us very soon. So, um, so these are what these calls are about. And as you know, they're very interactive. So please ask your questions anytime. Mute yourself when you're not speaking. We spoke about that a minute ago and you know why now. And uh, we are recording this um, because a lot of you want to watch this again afterwards. And every month we have a specific topic um, and we invite a precious guest. And again, we did it this time um, and it gets better and better every single time. And uh, um, the topic we're talking about today specifically is um, how you play a powerful inner game of successful speaking. And I know some of you are already established, uh, you know, accomplished speakers. Some of you are pretty much at the beginning starting out. But no matter where you are with your speaking right now, the results you get and how much you enjoy being a speaker very much is an expression of your internal story of what's happening inside of you. That's what we call your inner game. And, uh, you know, only when the inner game, you know, and what the inner game is, we hear more about in a second, but only when the inner game is aligned with your dreams and visions, only then your results can dramatically change to the better. Once you play this inner game in an aligned way, you will eventually land those amazing speaking gigs. Um, you will speak with more confidence, and most importantly, you will also enjoy being a speaker along the way. Because there are many established stars out there, speakers, you know, um, uh, actors, uh, sports people, business heroes. And, uh, you know, sometimes we feel like they have it all, but they're not enjoying it. And we don't want you to go there. 
So let's make sure your inner game is aligned so you secure more well-paid speaking gigs, you embrace more successes, and you enjoy being the expert and the speaker, the amazing speaker that you are, that's inside of you. So let's talk about who is our special guest today with us. Let me introduce him. Um, obviously, he's been with us already four years ago. It was more than time to bring him back. Um, he is an international speaker and coach. He is very well known for his transformational programs with high achievers. Um, you know, he really works with, you know, great people from the performance industry, the business world, in other areas. And uh, he really works with high achievers that are often in the public eye, you know, such as professional footballers, pop stars, speakers, entrepreneurs, and others. And he himself had an international career as a great actor, singer, dancer, in which he, you know, and also he recently appeared in the movie, you have heard about it, James Bond, right? Uh, Spectre. And, uh, you know, he was uh, on a British TV series, The Night Manager. I remember we had a conversation afterwards and you said, Monique, did you see me? <laughs> so that was so <laughs> funny. Uh, and he now helps private clients worldwide to really um, disband his self sabotages and limiting beliefs and really enjoy the successes they, you know, they often could not imagine even having before and really being happy and embracing it and being fully themselves. He's also, and we are together, founding members of the Network of Transformational Leaders. This is how we know we've known each other. He's also a co-founder of the Change Makers, which we are both part of. So really good, dear friend. Um, you know, he has developed the audio program, successful edition programs for creative high achievers, and released the city Angels of Forgiveness, the little journey of letting go. And I keep meeting people around the world um, that say, hey, I've you know, just recently, listen to that CD again, it's really touching me, and so it does, it does touch me as well. And so you have specialized in high achieving mindset and the techniques, at the, you know, and at the core of your work, uh, you often leave your clients with instant shifts in their reality. Again, welcome with me, everyone, you're gonna love this man as I love him. Welcome with me and open your heart and mind and soul. Welcome with me, Guido Shimanski. Guido, it's so great to have you back. Well, thank you for having me again. Um, <clears throat> wow, what an introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, that's interesting to hear. Um, so I am very pleased. Should I just dive in and do I you what I... just dive straight in and you share I dive us. straight in. How so you play the most powerful inner game in being a speaker? Perfect. Um, my entire work today is about the inner game, as Monique said before. And but before I want to dive into that and and share with you how you can align more with the successes you might already have or you want to have, um, tell you a little bit more about why am I here today and what my story is. Monique has mentioned quite a bit already. Um, these people that I work with, you know, they, they often come to me because they want to either be the best at what they do or become the best, stay the best. And what I find most importantly, enjoy the successes they already have. So they don't sabotage themselves in their most important moments and they can draw on their potentials and their talents. Um, you as speakers have most likely experienced that, that, you know, you, you, you know what you're doing, you're prepared, you know your game, you know what you're up to. And then suddenly you go out on stage and you, you know, I've experienced this, you, you black out or your knees or your, your knees get weak, your voice quivers, or you, you say things that you weren't meant to say. Um, so these are classic things that we do to sabotage ourselves in the greatest moment when it actually, when it actually matters the most. I've seen this with footballers. I've seen this with, um, I have a bit of a, a feedback now, Monique. And so someone's got this big, oh, it's gone. I, I took care of it, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So when I work with these, at the moment, these are um, executives. The, at the moment, this is a German national footballer or even a pop star. I've worked with actors. I've worked with speakers and singers. Um, so for me, my niche is not a speaker or an actor or a footballer or an executive. My niche is someone who knows exactly what they want to do. My niche is the high achieving mindset. And if you know where you want to go in your life, if you have a dream or a vision, 
it is usually quite easy to see what supports you on your way there. And it's very easy for me to see what are the hooks that might hold you back and hold you back from completely diving into achieving that vision and living that vision. So with these high achievers, very often the image they project, the outstanding careers, the fame, the money, the success, often even the happiness and how they really feel inside are two completely different sides of the story. I've just a couple of months ago, I've spoken to someone who said, well, now, you know, I've got the career, I've got the wife, I've got the mansion, I've got the money. I thought I'd be happy now. And that really breaks my heart to see somebody have such immense talent, not only having the talent, but living the talent and then not being able to fully enjoy it because very often they're just waiting to be found out. And that was a big story in my life, which I dive into later a bit more that they are waiting to be found out that even though they have the results and the career that, that they are waiting for people to go, well, he's actually not that good or she shouldn't be there. Or when will they finally see that I'm actually not that great in what I do because I just play because I just do what I have fun with. And so I like to say I close the gap between the image someone projects and how they really feel inside and help them see well, help them see how magnificent they really are in what they do. And this is my intention for you today. So that we understand what the inner game is a bit more. That you understand why in some areas of your life, things just flow and seem to fall into place. And in other areas of your life where you put the same attention in, you keep hitting the same wall. How you can align that in a game in all areas and take it forward and how you can then enjoy your success to the fullest. Does that sound like a good intention? So that is where I want to take you today. How did I end up doing this work? Besides being a coach, I actually started as a, as a health coach looking at subconscious blocks that might create or hold an in illness in the body. But my career, why I do what I do today started many, many decades before that. Sounds like I'm 170 years old. Um, I used to be, as Monique said, a classical ballet dancer. So I danced for the Bavarian State Ballet. Then I decided to become an actor. And in order to, so I trained as an actor, and in order to bring my voice into my body, I started taking singing classes and train as a singer. To make a long story short, I ended up in musicals like Cats, Mamma Mia, Kiss Me Kate. I then took care of those shows on an um, artistic supervision side. So I had people come into auditions and could really see how does someone make themselves shine and how can someone, although they have all the talents in the world, make himself or herself not shine at all, break down, be nervous and make us see about that much from, from their talent. And especially when you sit in a audition you see people come in to sing a song for us for a role me as a dancer what was very interesting to see was to see an actor to come in and just sing a story probably not the best voice but you felt safe because they knew exactly what they were doing and a dancer would or a dancer would come in and would the first thing he would say would be yeah i'm not really a singer so already sabotaging setting up the, their stage for failure making us see well you're not really a singer so but you're coming in to sing and then Although they had more talent than everybody else, we couldn't put them into their place or in, you know, couldn't place them in the role because their inner game wasn't aligned. They weren't ready to step into that part. And so I saw all these patterns happen and I saw them with myself, but I didn't know how to change them. Truth been told, I was on stage for 25 years at that time and I didn't enjoy it. Well, I enjoyed, of course, my career, but there was always fear. There was always that feeling that someone else would feel better. There was always that knowing that I shouldn't really be there. And, you know, I'm, I'm just the second cast. My big thing was always, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a good second cast because I can pull it off, but I'm not really that good. And I kept landing all these gigs, luckily, and I should have landed now going, if I'm now thinking back, the career could have been something completely different. But I wasn't ready to actually accept what I was able to do because I kept playing myself down. I kept sabotaging myself and I just couldn't see myself. Funny enough, I couldn't feel and see myself in the place that I wanted to be. So I had this vision of always being a leading man. And yet I kept questioning 
why I should be there and that, that I really shouldn't be there. And so when I look at this inner game and what we do today, I assume there's three categories of speakers in this call. There's the successful ones that are already successful and are completely happy and just go, well, what else can I treat? So with my client, very often they have, they say, I have everything, I'm happy, I can do this, but I know there's something more. Let's see what else we can get out of this. There also might be some of you who are just starting out and in that place, it's, it's a great place to start looking at the inner game and looking at your alignment so you can maybe accelerate your path to more speaking. And then hopefully, but maybe, hopefully not, but maybe there's speakers in here that are very successful, that have the career, that have the money, but they're in the same place that I was waiting to be found out and actually can't enjoy the success because they're fearful or they go on stage and they're stressed. Um, then their nerves are kicking in and they start sabotaging on some, on some different levels. So hopefully what I will do with you today will address all three groups. And most likely we're all part of every group. So in order to understand the inner game, I always compare that with, I compare our subconscious mind with a computer. I use the analogy of a computer, which for me makes it so easy to understand how we function. And I'm looking at my computer here, I've got a Mac at home. And when that computer came out of the factory, it was a beautiful computer, beautiful hardware, the, the thing that we see, but it also has an operating system and it has all the programs on it. So when that computer was first built, it was only the hardware. And I always compare that with us as babies being born into this world. Now we come into this world and we're completely clean slate. Of course, now some people will argue this program already in uh, programming or conditioning during pregnancy, if you believe in past lives. For today's call, leave that outside. Let's start with birth. I think that, that gives us enough um, feel to play with. So we are like this empty hardware that now needs an operating system because that little kid, that little baby that is born into this world just doesn't know what is good. It doesn't know what is bad. It doesn't know what it can do, what it can't do, what is deserving of, what is worthy of. It just assumes I'm born so I'm worthy of being fed, getting my drink, being cleaned. And to grow, I mean, that's my only job. So it only knows that it's probably worthy. So it has no system in place to decide what works for me and what doesn't work. And how, most importantly, how does the world work? So in the analogy of the computer, the computer is now being built and it's that operating system. And the operating system is now being loaded, loaded on. And that operating system now decides what programs work for me and what programs don't. I mentioned before I have a Mac and that still has a CD, um, CD drive. It's clearly time for a new computer. When I used to put a Microsoft CD in there, the computer just said no, it just sped out the CD. And this is exactly how we as humans work. So let's say that little boy or that little girl grows up and doesn't know what is good and what isn't good. And it needs an operating system. And in order to get that, it now observes and absorbs its environment. It watches its parents, its teachers, its preachers, siblings, friends in school, and just how life happens in general. And it starts building its own operating system. And so it watches its parents and sees, oh, this is how relationship works. It's always loving, they're supporting each other, they're full of love. And in goes a program or it sees, oh, a relationship needs a constant, means a constant fight or a constant struggle, or it means that you have to fight and put yourself down. Um, and in goes a program. So there is no critical filter yet. There is no judgment on it. It just goes, oh, this is how it works. And in goes a program. It sees how does money work? How much money is in my family? So maybe there's always an abundance of money and there's, we're always provided for. In goes a program, or there's never enough money, we always struggle. In goes an operating system, or as it was in my family, there's always just enough. So we have, we watch, oh, this is how relationships work. Oof, in goes a, I do this because it, for me, it's like I put a pair of sunglasses on, and then we see, oh, and 
money always has to be a struggle or money is always there in goes another filter then um the average child on its in its first um, well the average child actually until it grows up until 18 years old will have heard a hundred to uh, two hundred thousand times you can't do this you're not good enough stop this you shouldn't be doing this and that's a lot of negative programming that becomes part of the operating system that filters out now the good news is before i keep going with this because that sounds a bit heavy in the beginning most of your program is good you're doing everything right otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here otherwise you wouldn't be sitting on a computer or a phone you manage to live you manage to survive you manage to feed yourself um, you manage to be reasonably healthy hopefully so most of the program was in place to tell us how to run our life some of the programming might have told you a different story and this is when as i said when parents come in and they tell you well this is what we this is how we do it in our family this is you know every woman in my family uh, in in my in my what do you call ancestry has always been uh, diagnosed with some form form of disease that's a programming that's not genetics it might be also genetics but that's a lot of programming that goes into the cells so out of collecting the data that is around us we now put all these filters in place that now tell us this is what i can do this is what i can't do this is what i should do and this is what i shouldn't do and according to these filters we now build our environment we now build how we see the world and how the world sees us and as nim said so beautifully um we don't see the world how the world is we see the world how we are and just like the computer that doesn't let a program run in a uh, put in we now deflect we delete and distort information that is all around us so you as speakers you might have had a hundred of opportunities around you that allowed you to step into your speaking game. But if it doesn't fit your already existing belief system, you might have filtered that out. So how else do we build those filters? Imagine there's this little girl. So um, just give me, I, I haven't really looked at the chat, so I'll keep an eye on that. I promise now if you have any questions, so I try to feed them in. I also help you. Gideon. Imagine now. I also help okay. you. I'll keep an eye on for you. If there's okay, anything perfect. coming up, I'll help you. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. So imagine now, this is not just the surroundings we observe and the things we are being told by our parents and by our teachers, our preachers, our siblings. It is literally observing facial cues and what is happening. Now, of course, we're primed in our life to be successful, to be the best in class, to do the best we can, to be good students. And that is most likely when we're most loved, you know, depending on the family. Now, imagine that little girl comes home. It's in its first class at school. And it's so excited. It has written homework and it's got an A. It's got, in Germany, we would say a, a, a one, you know. It's got out of one to six, it's got a one, and in America it would be an A. And she runs home and she's so excited. She goes, Mama, 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 I'm the best student in class. Maybe I'm even the best student of the whole year. It's so exciting. I have the best results. Look at this. And all she sees is a, a, a rush of worry going over the mom's face. Because what she doesn't know is that the older brother, just an hour before, came home. And he had the worst result of his entire class. And the mom, understandably, is now worried. Well, if you are so excited about being so good, it might actually hurt your brother more. The little girl doesn't know that. Her system only understands, ah, I must be successful. I must do my best. But I shouldn't outshine others. And in goes a program. And that is a very tight niche where suddenly we're in that stuck place of, I have to do everything to be successful, but I can't be successful because that might hurt other people. That is when we start dimming our lights. So what these delete and distort mechanisms really do is we, I believe you are magnificent in everything you do. And I already know that the stories you believe about yourselves, even the greatest stories you believe about yourselves, aren't true because you are beyond 
magnificent of what you think about yourself. And if there's one golden nugget I can give you today is don't believe everything you think. Question everything you think, but we get to this later again, because we need you to be in this place. If you have the urge to speak, if you have the urge to share your topic, your message, I deeply believe this is not coming from an ego place of, I want to stand in front of 3,000 people. I believe it's come, it's a calling. I believe it's your soul trying to express itself to the fullest. Unfortunately, the soul is wrapped in all that programming that we now discovered that we needed. It was very important. All that program was very important to keep us safe. First of all, we wouldn't have known how to get food and drink and how to even survive. But also we wouldn't have known how we interact in our social setting, how we fit in our tribe. To understand how this delete and distort mechanisms work, mechanism works a bit more, there's a story from The Big Leap, a book I highly recommend for anyone to, to explore their upper limit game or upper, lim upper, limit, um, upper limit game is probably the best word to describe it. And he tells a story of when they explored the deleting and distorting mechanisms, they were looking for some test people and they had, I believe, a professor who's written in and he said, okay, I, you know, there's something going on in my life that I want to change. Apparently, I'm in a marriage that has no love. And yes, this will make, that will make sense for you as a speaker later on. I just, this is just to understand how the program works. I'm in a marriage. My wife doesn't show me any love. She doesn't show me any, any warmth. There's um, no physicality. I mean, I, I might as well not be there. There's just no love in our marriage and we've been married for 25 years. So the, the professors went in and they lived with that couple for, I believe it was 24 hours. And what they saw was him being, let's say, a grumpy old kid and the wife putting a blanket over his shoulders saying, hey, lovely, so nice to have you in the house today. Do you want a cup of tea? I love you. Give him a kiss on the cheek. And the researchers were baffled. They were like, either she's putting this on or he really doesn't see this so they brought it up to him and they said don't you see you said you're not loved by your wife but don't you see she puts a blanket over your shoulder she brings you a cup of tea she tells you how much she loves you she gives you a kiss on the cheek so he had completely deleted the information because it didn't fit his existing operating system or belief system of i am unlovable now they brought it up now he had to see it he couldn't delete the information anymore. So he said, don't you see what's happening? His brain started racing, distorting. And what he said was, oh yeah, then she's only doing that because she wants something. Therefore, he now could see the information in a way that it would still not shake his belief system of being unlovable. And then when they started exploring, he realized that it was more his acting, his reacting and his beliefs that filtered out the one thing that he actually craved the most. So ever since I read that story, I've, I've been wondering, what am I filtering out in my life of the things that I wish the most? And when I have my big dreams and my visions, how I want to be reaching a broader audience, how I wanted to, Monique mentioned before how I played in the last James Bond movie and, and in the night manager that was the happening that was happening when I was already coaching and because I wasn't interested in those parts anymore I created a program for people to audition and suddenly I had no filters the doors open I went in and I just went in with a mindset of let's see how the, of, if my tools work for my clients I never in a million years it wasn't that I didn't believe I wouldn't get it. It didn't even cross my mind because it was so far removed from me, which opened my filter. So any questions so far? I know for me, this is what I'm steeped in every day, but I know very often the synapse has already <laughs> collapsed with my participants. If you have any questions, just a hands up and let me know. Very good. So to bring this a bit more home for you guys is, a few years back, I think it was two, three years back, 
I worked with a new Hay House author. She had just her new book coming out. It was about to be released uh, in those weeks. And she was now facing her first big speech for the mind, body, and soul. And then the stages were getting bigger. And suddenly all the fears were coming up. All the sabotages of, I can't do this. Who do I think I am? I know my stuff, but I don't think I can actually speak. I won't get a voice out. I won't get a sound out. And here she was been presented with the most incredible opportunity of now living her dream. And that was reaching a bigger audience. And everything in her system started folding. And so we started exploring what was happening. And of course, we came across those fears of people might laugh at me. And um, what if I lose, you know, what if I forget my words? And, and, you know, those you can release quite quickly and you can use some tricks in order not to forget your words or just go in and announce that you might be a bit nervous just to be human. But as we dug deeper and deeper and deeper, we found beliefs in her system that whenever, not whenever, but there was a time when she got more and more successful in what she does with her holistic spiritual approach, she started being attacked by her closest friend. Now, in her experience, what happened was she was being called a diva. She, she, she was being called all kinds of things and the relationship broke off. As we started exploring, she realized that she started sabotaging her success in order to make someone else feel better about themselves. As we started digging deeper under the belief, under the belief, under the belief, we also realized that that friend didn't have a problem with that author now being successful. She had a problem with herself. And seeing someone else rise to their power, reflected in her, showed her that she could have been doing more, that she could be doing more. And it only just shone a light on what she could do and what she wasn't doing. And in order to not having to change, she started attacking her friend and brought her down. Now, that was a powerful insight for my client, that it wasn't even about her. It was about that friend. And that the one thing that stopped her from having a successful talk on stage was not the fear of missing her words was not the fear of not remembering or losing her voice. It was the fear of being shunned. It was the fear of being rejected by her friends or from her tribe. And once we dug deeper into that, she realized that that was complete nonsense. That her real tribe, her family, her friends wanted her to succeed. Not only that, they wanted her message. And at that moment, a door opened she gave a fantastic talk. She released her second book I just saw recently. And she's on a roll. I've seen her speak. And it's just the most, most powerful place she's in because she's only being herself. And this is how our beliefs can interfere. How we sometimes think we're doing one thing because of a certain reason behind that very often stands a completely different reason. Or what some people call the big assumption that might block you. Again. You're doing incredibly well. And out of your programming, I want to guess 90% is probably very, very, very good. So don't focus on, oh, let's say, oh, shit, sorry to do this on your call, but I have to swear a little bit, Monique. Um, there is some things are wrong with me. I don't think there's anything wrong with you or, or that we need, we need fixing in any sort. We all need healing. That's just part of being human. That's part of growing and expanding. I believe there's everything right with you, but if you want to do something more, let's see where your inner game and your inner story supports your vision. Now, we want to explore, we want to question, what does speaking or being a successful speaker really mean to me? No matter if I'm already successfully in the game or if I just want to go there, does that mean you're stepping into leadership? Does that mean, I'm just getting my notes up, does that mean bigger visibility for you? So it might be that you want more visibility, but it might also be that when you have more visibility, that it might really just sabotage you. I was working with a um, female athlete who was just about going to be very successful over and over and over again. We're getting to the deleting part later on. Very, very good question. So 
we've been um, we're, I've been working with this athlete and she was just every time she would hit like national fame and international fame, something would happen. She started getting hurt, injured, and always at the same part. And when we dug deeper, we realized she wanted the visibility, but she feared the visibility because behind that, later we found out, was the fear that people would find out that she is gay. Now, that can be a massive block to being successful. Now, does it really matter? No, of course not. Does it mean it would actually come out? No, of course not. But her system wouldn't risk going there. And once we solved that problem, the, uh, the injuries started going away. So this is really, really powerful stuff, what we're, what we're talking about today. So my question to you, of course, is, first of all, how do you find out what your beliefs are? And this is the audience participation part. How do you find out what you really believe, what your model of the world is, and what your filters might be? What do you think? I can jump in. <laughs> uh, so the question is, uh, how do I find out, right? What's blocking me? Well, in the first yeah. place, it's just observing that something is blocking me. Like, you know, I, I know I want to do something, but I'm not doing it. Okay. Um, or uh, there is an opportunity and I don't pick up on it. Um, Perfect. You know, um, you know it, it's also just listening to our inner bullshit, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> that we all have, right? It's, uh, you know, critical voices coming up. I mean, there's so many ways of how we can. Exactly. I want to go even, even a step before that. Um, how do you find out what your personal beliefs are about yourself? The good ones and the bad ones. What do you think? I'm going to let you write it down. Look at your life. Yeah. Look at the results you get. Because I believe... Maybe that's just a belief. I believe that the results we get, our circumstances are a pure replica of our internal game. So for instance, I'm moving house in, two, in 10 days and I have such a good internal game about finding a new place. I've been doing this for years. Whenever I move out, I always find exactly what I want and exactly the location for exactly the price with the balcony, the wooden floors, because I have no limits there. There's other areas in my life. For a long time, money was a huge issue for me. And I found, you know, and I couldn't understand. I do everything I do, but I always ended up on a, on a level of always having enough. I was never in debt, but I was never getting above the zero line, really, until I explored and I realized that was my mom's beliefs. My mom chucked out in a, in a, in a 90-second conversation, I kid you not, three master beliefs that completely blew my mind. Money is for other people. Always just have enough. And when you're rich, you get crazy. And this is the beliefs I grew up with. And I just went, shit, okay. But if that is what's running my system, that is what I continue to recreate in my life. And the moment I knew that, the field is open. So I want to explore what it is that you might believe about yourself and or about your life. And some of these might be great. Some of these might be supporting you. Some might not be. Um, so if you have something to write in front of you, hopefully, just give me a few thumbs up. I don't see all of you perfect um, I'm gonna do a little exercise with you that I call association exercise or belief busting and very good Dirk so usually when I do this in the room you will get a paper in front of you you will turn it over and then you start writing without thinking since we can't do this here if I would have sent it through you would have the thought process would have started which is which is what I don't want I will start a sentence and you will finish the sentence without thinking we will aim to do this in three minutes. So I really just don't want pretty writing. Um, use stenography if you can, but remember the first word that comes to mind. So for instance, when my sentence would be, my car is, if your first in initial reaction is safe, write down safe, ugly, write down ugly, um, not there, write, you know, whatever comes. Don't think, don't judge it, don't analyze, just keep writing. And we're just gonna play this game 
And most important part is that you write down that last word and just a hint of what that first sentence would be. So are you ready? Ready, steady, go for some belief busting. Please complete, complete the following statements without thinking. Happiness is. My body is. My career is. Ooh, ouch. My family is. Can I give you some time? Success is. First thing that comes to mind, don't judge it. Don't make it good. It's about exploring what's the first initial thought that comes up. Don't try to be good, clever, or create something powerful. We come to that later. Next sentence, speakers are. Successful speakers are. Being a speaker means being successful means the topics I speak about are People think I am. Happy people are. Successful people are. And the last three, I am really good at. I am also really good at. And I'm also really, really good at. Okay. How was that? See a few smiling faces and few, a few thinking faces. Any surprises in there? Oops. Sarah, I see you gest gesturing, but I don't see so. You want me to say something? Yeah, that'd be amazing. Okay. I obviously, I came from the gym, so I'm obviously in a good mood. I'm surprised to see myself saying so many positive things because I'm the person who usually cries on the calls. So uh, <laughs> very nice to see you. <laughs> And it's a fun exercise. The last three questions are significant for me because I'm, what I'm good at first, I could put something down and then I have a total block. I'm not good at anything. And then when I had to really think in, in point three, what I'm good at, I came up with training and knowing my feelings and expressing them. Perfect. So, I mean, that's powerful. Bad if that's all it is, but yeah. I guarantee you that is not all that is, mm. but down to all the programming and the conditioning and the filters, 
we are, it's so easy for us to go into, well, I'm crap at this and not good at this and this is, needs to be better. This question always shocks people mm. because, you know, you explore, well, you know, success means this and um, touching sometimes in terms of, okay. Um, but then actually voicing, stating what I'm good at without fearing that I'm arrogant or full of myself or any of those things is quite powerful. It's just, if you say I'm good in expressing my feelings, that is a powerful tool as a speaker. That is at the core, should be at the core of your speaker and bringing somebody else into your feelings so they can feel themselves. You know, so this is powerful. How was for you guys the question successful people are? Any funny surprises there for anyone? People typing. Can you hear me? Yeah. My, uh, my answer was free. Successful people are free. Amazing. Very good. That feels good. Yeah. <laughs> who, who just um, posted in there? What was the question? Why did it trigger you so much? Someone just said something else. I think it was Sleever, right? She said, one answer yeah. to something inside of me. Is that? Who you're referring to, Kido? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want exactly. to share? Wait. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Can yes. you? Okay. Um, can you repeat the questions? So, what was your answer to your successful answer people, to are? people are? Brave. Successful uh, speakers are. Yeah, brave. Very good. How does that feel? Um, it, um, I feel it again now, it goes very deep. Now, this might now, be, this might be, um, if you just unmute um, yourself you for a moment, yourself because yourself I get the, I get the, I get the, uh, reverb. Re re uh, re um, now um, successful speakers now are successful great, speakers can are touch great. you because of two reasons. Either because you, thank you. Either because you feel, oh, I'm called to be brave. And because I'm in, so in awe of everyone who goes on stage and is brave, this is inspiring to me and this is who I want to be. Or there might be a filter on there that goes, hell no, I'm not going to be brave because brave means I'm continuously in a place of visibility, being attacked. So it could, it could be either one, on anywhere on that scale. And I want to invite you to dig deep why brave touches you so much. Because I believe in the end it will inspire you. And I want to make sure there's not anything along the way that might stop you. Because success, uh, uh, speakers in general are brave because they step out with a message, of course. And that might be danger to your system or might be great for your system because it gives you freedom. Or um, was, it, was it freedom that you said, Sabina? Um, free, yeah. So. When I did this exercise for the very first time, and I keep an eye on the, on the clock, Monique, um, someone in the studio got really, really quiet. And it wasn't a workshop where we spoke about, it was a semi-spiritual workshop, but it was all about creating a more successful future. And there was this guy for five hours and he was sitting like this and he wasn't having any of it. And after this exercise, he got very quiet and then he said, I've got something to share. According to this, list apparently i believe all successful people are liars i said does that resonate with you and he said yes actually it does and i said well we now have a problem he said why i said well you're in here because first of all this is a semi-spiritual workshop so i know you're most likely you want to be a good person that is at the core of your system being a good human being now you're also in here to be successful. And yet you have a belief running that tells you to, in order to be successful, you have to be a liar. It's not going to happen for you, my friend. And his entire system literally just, he just, his arms relaxed and he just looked at me and said, so what do I do now? And very often it is just the inside we need. And when I said, is it true that every successful speaker is a liar. Thinking of Richard Branson, for instance, he said, no, of course not. 
So go out and find the evidence for the opposite of that negative belief. So my invitation for you, because we only have a short call today, is go through your list, put down a judgment from one to 10, how supportive your statements are. If it says all successful people, uh, success, success, successful speakers are free, and apparently can't get a word out, successful speakers are free, that's a very powerful statement. That's a 10, a nine or a 10. If it says all successful speakers are arrogant, that's not gonna support you in where you wanna go. So one way to bust your beliefs is find the evidence for the opposite belief. So go and look, actively look for people who you think are successful speakers who might not be liars or who might not be full of themselves. I mean, you've got beautiful Monique to look up to. She's such a great example of integrity and of, of success and of speaking. So very soon you will find that the belief you carry might actually not make any sense at all. And this is what contradicting beliefs usually do. Once we dug deep and you think about these things that are on your list, you will find, oh, this doesn't make any sense. This doesn't help me. And as soon as our brain finds beliefs that are contradicting each other, it has to find a new way. It has to find a new solution. That's how easy it is. And that's why coaching, for instance, is so powerful. So has this been helpful so far? Is there any questions? Monique? There were some, yeah, absolutely. I love it. You know, I mean, as you know, I'm also teaching, you know, how to let go of limiting beliefs and all this thing. And uh, we can teach it as much as you want. We always discover some new ones in ourselves every single time, right? So yeah. it's, it's great. Um, thank you. Uh, but let's pick up on a couple of questions that were asked along the way today. Um, I don't know, Herlinda, I feel that we answered your question, how can I delete my beliefs or detect in my beliefs in an easy way? I think we spoke about that, right? May I ask mm -hmm. another question, please? Yeah, you can. Of course. In the moment. Sure. Um, is there anything or, uh, you know, in my mind I can work with when I prepare the speech? It's like, you know, I'm going through a lot of ups and downs by preparing something and I think, oh, this is not great. I have to find something else. I find some, you know, visuals I don't like. I, 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 I feel like I get into a fight with very nitty gritty stuff, which doesn't help at all. And it might, yeah, and it might be holding me back from something big. And it's, and I haven't tackled it right now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to pick up Very on good. that one? Yeah. Yes. So there's two things. And I, I did write down five steps how we can address those things a bit more. So I'm just going to dive into this. Um, so one of the five steps is after this call already realizing that it is just a story and you have to continuously remind yourself that that one, that, that, that monkey on your shoulder that keeps telling you this is good, you need to find better images, um, is doing its job. It wants to keep you safe from maybe not being kicked out of your family, from not being loved, from whatever the story is from a long, long time ago. Um, but it's just a story. So very often in that case, when that happens to me nowadays, I just notice the story, know it's a story, face the fear and do it anyway. And I just go on and do, let's say 80% instead of 100%. And then I'll go back to see, okay, can I, is there anything that I can do better? Because what that voice usually does is it stops you from even going past the first page. And so it's, it's very much a, a case of notice it and keep going. Very often, what might work as well for you is write it down, write the story down or the fear down, put it aside, keep working, and then sit with the feeling. Let's say it's a fear of losing, of being, you know, being kicked out of your tribe, for instance, or that people laugh at you. Don't push the feeling aside. Acknowledge it at some point, let it in, and sit with it because very often the moment we allow it to come in and fully explore, explore it, we find a place of what's the worst that can happen. Oh, the fear is the worst thing. 
the, what the fear stands for isn't even the bad, the worst. It's being stuck in that fear. So sit with it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, meditate for, with it, and therefore let it, um, very often it just dissolves. The second question is those lines that you've written down, I said, mark it down from one to 10 and anything that's below a five, rewrite it. Watch your inner talk. So when you sit there and you, and the monkey starts, watch your inner talk and start reprogramming. Tell yourself a different story. For instance, if you have a sentence, I have one before, um, I've written down, funny enough, speakers are full of themselves. That is one of my old, old, old things. And I, I'm surprised that popped up uh, in, 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 a, in a facet here. Um, how can I reframe that in a positive manner? Speakers are always on duty. People are, speakers are always serving others. Could be a powerful reframe for that one. Now, that might feel like a lie. Or maybe if I go into the complete opposite, speakers are humble, then this might be not feeling true to me because it goes against my operating system. It might feel like a lie, not a true story. But here's the thing, that all speakers are full of themselves is also not a true story. It's just completely made up. So it's coming out, reprogramming and choosing a story that supports you rather than one that doesn't support you. Now that's a bit of work, but I've been doing this for over 10 years. And every time I pick up on, on a sentence or a thought, I go, oh, thanks for sharing, shift. What is the opposite belief? When I walk past the mirror, I go, oh, you look fucking old. Hasn't happened in a long time, but I used to, couldn't pass the mirror without putting myself down. That's not helpful. So I go, no, you know, you're doing all right. Or whatever you want to put in there. So keep reframing, pre-framing your sentences and change your inner talk and it will feel like a lie. But the thoughts you're having, you're only having because you continuously thought them before. So continuously choosing a better thought will reprogram that. That is tip number three. Do I have time to go through the next, the last three? And I do think we might answer all the questions with that very fast because we have one minute left but yes <laughs> Good. in a talk um be aware it's a story actually take responsibility is i think you're all doing this by sitting here just saying it might not be my fault that i might have taken on some beliefs but i can make it my responsibility to change it and the last advice is look for help as well don't do this by yourself. Um, it's like, I always say, it's finding your own deepest belief. You can get far with these tools, but very often it's like you're watching TV like this. You're too close to see the picture. And the very pattern that is trying that you're trying to solve is the very pattern that is trying to keep you safe and therefore it doesn't want to be seen. So notice what keeps popping up. And if you feel stuck, there was something coming in. If you feel you're stuck somewhere, uh, find a coach, find a healer, find a therapist. Um, give me a call. There's so many people out there. You know, there's so many different tools that might be helping you. This is my life. This is what I do, helping people get past their inner game. So reach out to me. I'm happy to work with either one of you and just see what we can do. And that was me over and out on the inner game. cut you off but uh, thank you so much um, Guido uh, and I want to honor Miriam who also asked the question early on um, maybe while I share your email address with everyone that might want to reach out to you um, you know Miriam was asking the question have you noticed that the challenges your clients your clients face change as they get more successful or is an early breakthrough enough to see them go all the way, all the way? Um, there is usually a big shift happening in the beginning that sets them onto another platform. Um, but if you reach for new things, since we're beings of contrast and you, you know, what seems your full potential right now, once you reach that, you have a new contrast and you go, well, that would be nice as well. And that would be nice as well. So we keep expanding new things show up. They get easier and easier and easier. And very often they're just, a different shade, a different grading of 
what we've worked on before. And if an old problem pops up again, an old feeling, it's usually a sign that you are reaching a new level. So with each, you know, that's the saying, every level has its, has its devil. So with, with each new level you reach, you can dive even deeper and release even more. Yeah, it never stops, right? <laughs> it never stops. And that's the beauty. It, always, it keeps growing. It takes bigger swings, right? And when you think like, I solved this, and then you realize, oh, where is this now coming from? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's usually a sign that you made a huge step forward. Right. New level, new devil, as you said. And so, absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Guido, for being here with us today. And I know that... You know, no matter where we all are, including you, including me, including everyone in this call, including everyone in our community, including every human being on this planet, <laughs> we are, it's a journey. It's a lifelong journey, right? I mean, we are programmed so early in our life and, uh, you know, probably messed up in the first at least 15, if not 20 years of our life, and we spend the rest of our life to clean up, right? <laughs> to yeah. reprogram ourselves, to you know, embrace and see our magnificence. And uh, I feel that as speakers, we're doing an incredible job already because otherwise we would never be able to step up on the stage and share and open our heart, mind, and soul and speak to people about all these amazing yeah. messages that we have to share. So thank you all for your courage, for your bravery, for being the magnificent, brilliant selves that you are. Um, and thank you so much, Guido, for doing the work that you do, because as you say, we cannot do it on our own. We need someone to mirror us from time to time. We need someone that helps us clean up these things. So this is why coaches, mentors like you are incredible. Um, and you know, you know the game. You work with high achievers, you work with performers. You are a performer, yeah. right? So you know all the messages we give ourselves all the time. Oh, yeah. That prevent us from really going up and being, being our magnificent selves. So thank you so much for being with us. And everyone that, if you want to have a chat, I know Guido is amazing. If any questions came up that we couldn't answer today, I know, um, you know also put them into our community. You know where to find our Facebook, my speaker business community. Post your questions there. Um, if you really are serious about working on your beliefs and you want to do more of a deep dive work on that, get in touch with Guido. Um, if it's just a quick question, post it in our, into our community because everyone will benefit from hearing your question. A lot of oh, people yeah. will probably recognize that they have exactly the same question and they will also benefit from hearing Guido's answers. Okay, so post your questions into the community. If you seriously consider to do more deep dive work on that, get in touch with Guido. I posted his email address, so just look into the chat for everyone that wants to connect with and you. And we're all in Facebook yeah. anyway, so. Yeah, and we're connected on Facebook, so you can reach out on Facebook. And again, you know, from the bottom of my heart, a big thank you to you um, for being here with us, Guido, sharing your wisdom insights. It's so important, um, no matter if you're speakers, or you know, experts, or entrepreneurs, or employed, or just human beings, we all play these games all the time, right? So cleaning them up is the foundation to making whatever we do, a jumping board to stepping higher, making a bigger difference, becoming a better person, uh, exactly. and you know, being brilliant as speakers. So thank you all for being here with us. Thank you for spending your lunch hour or your morning hour or evening hour with us, depending on where you are around the planet. It's so great to know that we together embrace the world um, all the time. And um, it is one um, shameless announcement on my side I would like to make again. Uh, we are starting again uh, in pretty much next week already. Our new four week, uh, my speaker business uh, or professional speaker launch program. So everyone that wants to step up with your speaking, wants to really find out what is your message, what's your ideal audience, what stages you can speak on, and how to really make money with your speaking directly and indirectly, I'd like to also share a link to that. So please um, consider that for yourself if you want to step up with your speaking. You know, you've been on the first round with us, so you're going to be even going more into stages. And... Um, you know, if you know any people that want to go professional with their speaking, want to step up with their speaking, please uh, do them a favor to share this link. Um, and we still have some seats on the new journey together. So I look forward to helping even more people to be mag become magnificent speakers and brilliant speakers um, and sharing their message with the world because the world needs to hear, right? 
Great. So, Guido, thank you so much for being with us, everyone. Thank you for being with us. And next month, again, we have another amazing guest. Uh, but again, let's just enjoy the moment and let's uh, just share our gratitude with Guido and with all of you for being here. Thank you for letting me share this. Thank you for doing your magic. Thank you, Guido. Thank you, Monique. It was a really great call. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye.